Hello everyone and welcome to Illinois Humanities' latest installation of the Envisioning Justice Rapid Response series. Tonight's theme is reform. I'm Jane Beachy and I'm the Artistic Director of Illinois Humanities. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Tyrese Williams and I'm the Program Manager for Envisioning Justice at Illinois Humanities. Um, we activate the humanities through free public programs, grants, and educational opportunities that foster reflection, spark conversation, build community, and strengthen civic engagement. Illinois Humanities is a nonprofit organization and the state's affiliate for the National Endowment for the Humanities. And our Envisioning Justice initiative leverages the arts and humanities to envision alternatives to the enduring injustice of mass incarceration. This initiative works with communities and people impacted by mass incarceration to spark conversation and illuminate community-based strategies that address our racist and unjust criminal legal system. You can learn more about all of this at ilhumanities.org and on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at ilhumanities, hashtag envisioning justice. And if you'd like to sign up to receive our biweekly digest, which features events, updates, resources, and relevant media, you can sign up on our website. For those of you who are watching live, we'll be dropping a link in the comments right now. Um, you should also check out the comments thread to see all of our social media handles. And we'll be sharing contributor bios and other relevant information in the chat throughout the evening. Um, huge thanks to the multi-talented Tony Santiago, who is our streaming producer tonight, um, and whose video editing skills are making this all possible. Thank you, Tony. And we're also excited to let you know that following tonight's program, we will be graced by a DJ set from the spectacular El Okari, a DJ, activist, and artist here in Chicago. El Okari sets are not to be missed, um, so stick around after the credits roll. All right, now let's get into tonight's program, Reform. The theme, Reform, was chosen in response to the recent passage of Illinois' criminal justice omnibus legislation, HB 3653, a bill that sets into motion a number of hotly contested reforms targeting the inequities embedded in the state's criminal legal system. Such measures include the elimination of cash bail, a restriction on access to certain military-grade weaponry for Illinois police forces, and a provision to end prison-based gerrymandering. And as with any reform legislation, a spectrum of responses have circulated, and Illinoisans are still sitting with many questions about all that is included in this expansive bill and what it means for those of us in pursuit of a more just society. Tonight's program will feature eight videos created by a talented group of artists, humanists, and community organizers who are working in and advocating for system-impacted communities within Illinois. Each video will share perspectives on the long debated topic of criminal justice reform and what the term has meant to those dedicated to changing or abolishing our current systems of punishment, incarceration, and community policing. We also posed a few questions to the contributors to consider as they created their videos for tonight's program. Um, those were, one, what impact has reform legislation historically had on movements for long-term and progressive systemic change? Two, how is the notion of reforming, amending or removing flaws from a given structure, both fundamentally alike and different from the advocacy for a complete dismantling and replacement of our current systems? And three, what comes after HB 3653 and reform bills like it are signed into law? Um, ultimately, we hope tonight's contributions will elicit big questions within each of you. Um, questions that will render collective consciousness, mutual understanding, and reparative solutions to harms caused by our criminal legal system. We also hope you'll continue this exploration with us tomorrow night, um, Thursday, April 15th, at this same time, 7 p.m. Central Time, um, for a central... Oh, we hope tonight's contributions will elicit big questions within each of you. Questions that will render collective consciousness, mutual understanding, and repetitive solutions to harms caused by a criminal legal system. We also hope you'll continue this exploration with us tomorrow night, Thursday, April 15th, at this same time, 7 p.m. Central Time, for a facilitated, critically reflective conversation featuring carceral justice experts from around Illinois. Envisioning Justice Fellow Meredith Naka will guide us through an evening of facilitated conversation 
meant to provide a space for inquiry in relation to HB 3653 and ask questions in community with others. So if you registered for tonight's program, you will have received a Zoom link for tomorrow night in your confirmation email. If you did not, never fear. We will drop a registration link in the chat right now and we'll put it underneath this video on YouTube in case you're not watching live, but still have time to catch the discussion tomorrow night. Yeah, with that, I say it's time we get started. Let's do it. Um, I am so excited to get to introduce our first contributor for the evening. Jen Freeman, also known as Pochop, is a Chicago-based burlesque artist as well as the creator and author of the blog zine, The Brown Pages. Pochop has performed at the Brooklyn Museum in Brown Girls Burlesque's Body Speak and headline shows in New Orleans, Minneapolis, St. Louis, and New York. Pochop is a member, a board member and a cast member for Jeezy's Juke Joint, an all-black burlesque review. Pochop performs on Netflix's Easy, Season 2, appears in music videos for songs by Jamila Woods and Michael DeVille, and creates and performs experimental dance films such as Litany. Jen Freeman was recognized as a 2021 Foundation of Contemporary Art Grants to Artists recipient, a 2019-2020 Urban Bush Women Choreographic Fellow, and a 2018 Chicago Dance Makers Lab Artist. Pochop was voted the number 10 most influential burlesque artist by 21st Century Magazine and was a dancer in residence at the Rebuild Foundation in 2020. Without further ado, here's Notes on Dynamite by Pochop. Granddad knew uniforms. Starched and rigid, he knew lines of buttons. He knew how to slide into decorated outfits with a ritualized taste. He knew oaths taken with heavy breaths. While the Black Panther Party was feeding babies pancakes, Granddad was keeping the white man's law in order. His name was Haywood Hughes Harris Jr. Most folks called him Dynamite. I called him Granddad. Granddad was born on December 26, 1931 in Missouri's Boot Hill, Hayti, Pemiscot, Missouri, the southeastmost tip of the state, more south than Midwest. This land tells stories of floods and earthquakes, intrusive boy weevil infestations, rich land, poor sharecroppers, white violence. In 1965, when my granddaddy became the first black officer to join the Poplar Bluff Police Department, this wasn't his first time taking an oath. he just returned from serving in the military, the Korean War. Among rippling rebel flags and crisp white sheets draped in open closets, granddad swore to enforce law and order in a town that wouldn't come to desegregate their school district until three years later. What I know about granddad's time in law enforcement, I discovered online over the last few weeks. News articles dating back to 1973. Just two years after being awarded Policeman of the Year, Granddad found himself in a barrel among bad apples, entangled in a messy department-wide investigation that included media leaks, the whistleblower being promoted to chief of a nearby force, and my grandfather being found guilty of an adequate leadership and violating rules of conduct. He was demoted to sergeant and ineligible for promotion for a year. Granddad, how am I to uphold your legacy when it contradicts my belief in a world without prisons or police? How should I remember you? By the time I was born in 1985, Granddad was 54. His uniforms were wrapped in plastic and hung in the back of his closet. His career as an officer was rarely discussed. I remember him as stern, yet generous. He had a husky voice, a cooked tongue, always carried the sweet scent of freshly mowed grass, was quick to fall asleep. He'd taken to part-time security jobs, coaching Little League and maintaining lawns. 
I remember marveling at his thick hands while we bounced down tiny gravel roads in his pickup truck. I've heard folks describe him as hateful, mean. What I remember about Granddad was the presence of quaking anger, resting just under the surface. He held a simmering rage that could grip silence. Granddad, what was the cost of maintaining law and order? Wow. Thank you so much, Pochop, for that beautiful performance and for sharing this aching and intricate family history. That last layered question, what was the cost of maintaining law and order, hits especially heavy as we witness the trial of Derek Chauvin, as we process the killings of George Floyd, but also of Dante Wright, 13-year-old Adam Toledo, and countless others whose lives have been lost, spirits have been stripped, and freedom has been revoked, all to maintain the so-called law and order that often perpetuates the wrongful criminalization, punishment, and execution of those who hold marginalized identities. Thank you um, so much for bringing all of that uh, to the table with this beautiful work, Pochop. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Pochop. Uh, yeah, so our next contributor, Kai Ajai, is a first-generation Nigerian-English-American who taught political science for almost 15 years as an adjunct at three universities. Kai has long been active in his community, serving in many capacities, including as a church trustee and steward. He is also a member of the Bloomington Human Relations Commission, having been appointed to the role by the mayor of Bloomington. Kai now serves as the president of, at Central Road Energy, the largest aggregator for the Illinois Solar for All program. Kai's hopes are to spread solar to those communities most in need of environmental and financial relief. To quote him, I do, I do not want black and brown and poor communities to be left behind by the solar revolution as they were when the internet superhighway was built. It's my pleasure to introduce our next video by Kai Achai. Hello. I'm Kaya Jai. We're going to talk about reforming our thinking on crime. There's a popular saying that goes, if the penalty for a crime is a fine, then that law only exists for the lower class. Think about that. The limit on criminality is the size of your bank account. If I can afford the crime, I can act as a criminal with impunity. Here's another slightly older saying. It is criminal to steal a purse, daring to steal a fortune, and a mark of greatness to steal a crown. The blame diminishes as the guilt increases. This is from Johann Christoph Friedrich Scheiler, 1859 to 1805, 1759 to 1805. What's the lesson here? Small crimes are frowned upon. Large crimes are honored. So following this sort of historic approach to crime, it's not surprising that today, conventional thinking is that we need a war on crime. We have to stop crime. We have to arrest criminals. We have to make the streets safe. So we enact laws to fight crime and we hire police officers to keep us safe. But rarely do we think of how we got to this stage of wanton criminality. Why do these criminals commit crime? Well, there's a wealth of research telling us what the root causes of, of crime are. Even the former NYPD police commissioner, uh, Patrick Murphy, agrees that among these root causes are, and I quote from him, poverty, unemployment, underemployment, racism, poor health care, bad housing, weak schools, mental illness, and here's the kicker, a society of selfishness and greed. We need to reform our thinking. We need to shift from dealing with symptoms to providing solutions. We need to switch from locking folks up to providing an environment where resorting to crime is not necessary in order to live. Well, this is going to require a switch 
and our fundamental view of what it means to be an American. We need to shift, we need to reform our thinking from an individualistic point of view and view of society to a more communal view. We need to support and advance legislation that seeks to uplift rather than punish. So let's take a look at Portugal and how they approached drug use. Since 2001, drug use has been seen as a health issue and treated as such. The result, a 50% decrease in convictions and imprisonments of, of uh, imprisonment of drug traffickers between 2001 and 2015. The number of drug-related deaths dropped from 131 in 2001 to 20 in 2008. Now, given our current political climate in this country, while it's improved potentially under the Biden-Harris administration, it's unrealistic to expect such wide-ranging wide -ranging change as evidenced by the Portuguese model. However, on the state level, there is one example of such legislation, and that, that is the Illinois Solar for All program. Now, while it's not perfect, it does provide low-cost solar options for folks in Illinois through three sub-programs, community solar, nonprofit public facilities, and low-income distributed generation. Projects that I have been directly involved in will result in almost $50,000 in electric savings for the first year and $1.8 million in electricity savings over 25 years in the nonprofit public facility sector. And these are for nonprofits and public facilities serving black and brown and poor folks in environmental justice uh, communities. In addition, the program provides free training for the formerly incarcerated, for, for foster care alumni, and residents of low income and environmental justice communities. In order to receive incentives from the Illinois uh, Solar for All program, companies are required to hire graduates of these uh, training programs. What's the result? The most vulnerable among us have access to a quality education, to em employment, both which are rewarding on a financial and environmental level, and they also have the opportunity, opportunity to be up, upwardly mobile. When one is gainfully employed with a living wage, one is less, less likely to need to rob in order to live. Now, this program is funded by an elect electricity rate charge that amounts to roughly $30 per year for the average home in Illinois. That's less than 10 cents a day. So let's use this as an example of how we can reform our thinking, our thinking about what a civilized society looks like about what it means to be just and to be fair. Let's reform our thinking about how we treat folks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kai, uh, for that video. Um, I wanted to just pull out a quote in there. Um, and Kai said, um, we need to shift from treating symptoms um, to providing solutions. Um, and I think that's such an important thing to consider as we all reflect on the idea of reform and in our journey towards justice. Um, so thank you, Kai, um, for that offering. Yes, thank you so much, Kai. Um, I'm so excited to introduce our next contributor. I'm a huge fan of hers, so I'm a little giddy. Um, Angel Bot Dawid is a Black American composer improviser, clarinetist, pianist, vocalist, and DJ. Her critically acclaimed album, The Oracle, released by Chicago label International Anthem, was created entirely alone, with Angel performing, overdubbing, and mixing all instruments and voices by herself. It was recorded using only her cell phone in various locations from London to Cape Town. In the fall of 2019, she composed and premiered Requiem for Jazz at the Hyde Park Jazz Festival, and in 2020, composed Peace, a sweet suite for Skylanding, commissioned by the Art Institute of Chicago for Yoko Ono's outdoor Skylanding installation. Angel tours internationally with her septet, The Brotherhood, whose, whose album Live made NPR's Best of 2020 list. She also leads the all-woman trio, Sisters of the Nitty Gritty. As half of the group, the duo group, excuse me, Dawi, Angel and sound artist We Unwe produced, mixed, and self-released the album Message from the Dawi, 
which was featured at Tusk Festival 2020. Angel is the clarinetist in Damon Locke's Black Monument Ensemble and hosts a monthly music show on NTS Radio. Here is a beautiful musical arrangement by Angel Bat Dawid. Truly incredible. Thank you so much, Angel. Wow. Um, so Angel shared a few, a few details with us about her process for creating the video you witnessed tonight, and I wanted to share those with you. She said, well, I do a lot of research before I actually even get to the creative part. So I looked up the bill, referring to the criminal, um, criminal justice omnibus bill, of course, and read through it. I also read articles and watched a lot of videos. Such a bill is so necessary and important right now. So after all my research, I wanted to bridge composition and visuals with the idea in mind of it being a kind of virtual almanac in response to the bill. Your deep thought and effort are so evident in this contribution, Angel, and we are unbelievably grateful to have your work here with us for this program about reform. Yes, uh, so grateful for you, Angel, thank you. Um, yeah, so our, our next contributor for tonight is, is James Kilgore. And James is an activist, researcher, and writer based in Urbana, Illinois, where he has lived since paroling from prison in 2009. Um, he's the director of the Challenging Incarceration Project at Media Justice and the co-director of First Followers Reentry Program. 
He is also the author of six books, including the award-winning Understanding Mass Incarceration and the forthcoming Understanding Decarceration. Uh, I am pleased to introduce Unmasking Reform from None Other Than James Kilgore. Hello everyone, I'm James Kilgore from First Followers Reentry Program in Champaign, Illinois. And I've entitled this video, Unmasking Reform. I'm sure we all realize that the system of mass incarceration is creating huge problems for people in our state. We have almost 30,000 people incarcerated and about 57% of them are black people in a state with a population that's only 15% black. We need change. The question is whether or not the system is broken or if the system is doing what it was set up to do, which is to punish and isolate certain sectors of the population. But whether you think the system is broken or needs to be abolished, nonetheless, in the meantime, we're going to have to fight for change. We're going to have to fight for reforms that will reduce the harm done by prisons, jails, immigration detention centers, and other forms of law enforcement in this state. So activists have come up with a list of questions that we ask when a reform comes across our table. How do we decide whether or not this is worthwhile supporting or whether it's going to take us sideways or even backwards? So I have four questions that I think might be helpful as we decide what to support. The first one is simply, does this measure reduce the number of people in prisons, jails, immigration detention centers? Does it take bodies out of cages and into communities? If it doesn't do that, it's probably not something we're gonna throw our wholehearted support behind. Secondly, does it reduce the funding and the resources that go to policing prisons and jails, to law enforcement, resources that should be going to the community in order to keep people out of cages and to build healthier and strong communities. Thirdly, does this measure punish one sector of the population while doing good for another sector of the population? So for example, if a measure only targets people who have nonviolent convictions, but then doubles or triples the penalties for people who are convicted of violence, we're throwing some people under the bus in order to save others. We want a collective solution that addresses the problem holistically. And lastly, does the process that's involved to establish this reform, does it build the power of people who are impacted those of us on the ground who have experienced the inside of a prison cell and our loved ones, does it build our power to take things forward to make greater change? Or are we simply thrust to the sidelines to watch while lawyers, consultants, policymakers, legislators take all the action and our voice is silenced? So I hope these four questions will be of use to people. I hope you can use them as you try to decide where to put your energy, where to put the energy and resources of your organization as we fight to get people out of prison and fight for more justice in our communities. Thank you for listening. I look forward to communicating with further. Uh, thank you so much, James, uh, for providing us with such big questions as we all reflect on reform. Um, and if you haven't already, I suggest that you pick up and read his book, Understanding Mass Incarceration. It's fantastic. I can attest. Um, a, a really great primer if you're new to the conversation and um, an important uh, a set of deepening thoughts and ideas if you're, if you're more well-versed. Um, well, I'm so excited to introduce our next contributor, keeping it moving. Um, <clears throat> She is uh, just a fantastic person and artist and uh, glad that we have her here with us tonight. So Sylvia Inez Gonzalez is a multidisciplinary artist and educator in Chicago. Her visual and audio work are a ballad to nostalgia, the borderline between myth and memory. 
Sylvia has curated and facilitated workshops to address structures of power, imagination, play, confinement, and freedom. She's a member of the Chicago ACT Collective, Multi-Uso, the 96 Acres Project, and Chicago Art Department. As an organizer for the group POC, People of Color Artist Space, she connects artists of color from across Chicago to resources through meetups and development opportunities. Sylvia was awarded with the Three Arts Make a Wave Award in 2018 and a 2020 Maker Grant from the Chicago Artist Coalition. Now let's dive into Sylvia's reflection on reform. Take it away, Sylvia. And if I know anything at all, is that a wall is just a wall and nothing more at all. It can be broken down. Asada Shakur. Reform, 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 reform. According to the online etymology dictionary, reform, reform, verb, C. 1300, to convert into another and better form, from Old French reformer, rebuild, reconstruct, recreate, 12c, from Latin reformare, to form again, change, transform, alter, from re, again, c, r, e, plus formare to form, see form, noun, intransitive sense from 1580s, meaning to bring a person away from an evil course of life is recorded from early 15c of governments, institutions, etc. from early 15c, related, reformed, reforming, reformed churches, 1580s, usually are Calvinist as opposed to Lutheran. Reformed Judaism, 1843, is a movement initiated in Germany by Moses Mendelssohn, 1729 to 1786. Reform school is attested from 1859. Reform, noun. Any proceeding which brings back a better order of things. 1660s from reform verb and in some uses from French reformé as a branch of Judaism. Reform, 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 reform. Reform, 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 reform. Thank you so much, Sylvia, for literally weaving together so many elements of what this theme is all about. In exploring the definition of reform so thoroughly, you really helped us to hear some of the ways the term can convey the system's intended impact on an individual, as well as changes within a broader system itself. And those Asada Shakur and Angela Davis quotes that you shared remain so incredibly relevant to the conversation around reform. And because they went by so quickly, I wanted to pull out um, one section of one of those Davis quotes um, that says, what if the system cannot be fixed? What happens if we recognize the history of the prison is precisely the attempts to fix the system? These are crucial questions, of course, that can be expanded to apply to our entire criminal legal system and the moment that we find ourselves in right now. So. Thank you again so much, Sylvia. Yes, uh, very crucial questions. And thank you so much, Sylvia, for that video. 
Um, and so, yeah, our next contributor is certainly no stranger uh, to the Envisioning Justice community. Uh, Gabriela Juarez Dominguez is a transdisciplinary artist and humanist with years of experience. Her primary goal is to facilitate behavioral awareness using arts and technology. She created an arts and healing program for children in shelters who experience sexual and substance abuse in Mexico. Today, the arts and healing program is benefiting the communities of Marshall Square and Little Village in Chicago. For the last three years, Gabby has been participating as director of creative projects for Open Center for the Arts, where she has been leading programs like, the Envi like Envisioning Justice, Arts and Healing, One Summer Chicago, Artisito, um, El Jardín de Agua, among other public art projects. Um, here's a video by Gabriela Juarez Dominguez um, featuring voices from the Little Village community. dándole tanto poder a, a los agentes de ICE. Un ser humano es un ser humano, no por el hecho de que tengan una placa o tengan una credencial que los, los, los designa, eres, eres uh, miembro de, de, de una institución de muchísimo poder, vas a hacer lo que quieras. Estamos viendo las desigualdades que hay. Un latino o un moreno lo hubiesen matado. ¿Tenemos lo que pasó con George Floyd? ¿Cuántos latinos han sido encarcelados? Que los blancos, por ser blancos, no se les carga el, el peso de la ley como se lo hacen a los morenos, a los, a los afroamericanos y a nosotros los latinos. Sí, no hay, hay justicia ¿no? para mujeres y violaciones. No, tal vez que hay otra organización que, que, que sea más más considerada, ¿no? no tanto a los extremos. Estamos en el 2021, tiene que haber otro, otro tipo de, de, de forma, ¿no? Para hacernos igual. En total somos seres humanos. A mí, yo, yo vine de Guatemala a los 10 años y pasé ilegalmente. Y pasé por México. Cuando estaba en México, incluso tenía los pasaportes, tenía el permiso para estar en México. Pero te decía, no sabes que como centroamericano no hables, porque con el acento se dan cuenta que no es mexicano educarnos un poco en relación a comprender qué son los sistemas y cómo poder ayudarnos ¿no? a través del sistema. Pues si se habla de, una, de transformar, de, de mandar a una reforma, definitivamente tenemos que desvincular esta cuestión racista que existe en la ley o en los territorios de la ley, porque finalmente la ley está escrita para todos, pero quien lleva adelante esta situación, pues por lo general son los, son los, son los blancos. Si estamos peleando por una, por una reforma migratoria, judicial, etcétera, pues creo que, tiene, que tiene que haber una igualdad. Una igualdad independientemente del color de piel, de nuestro idioma, de nuestras culturas, etc. Uh, thank you so much, Gabby, uh, and to all of the, the folks from Little Village who lended their voices to that video. Um, I think the video was an important reminder of how interconnected our struggles are, despite our difference, um, and how important it is for us to, when we think about reforming our criminal legal system, we make sure that we include immigration and deportation in that conversation as well. Yes, thank you so much, Gabby. It is really an honor to um, get to be your colleague and uh, friend, and so we're so grateful to have you with us tonight. Um, so our next contributor, we're rounding the corner here, um, but we've still got a couple videos left for you. And our next contributor, Rinaldo Hudson, 
is uh, an educator and a community organizer who has focused his work on ending perpetual punishment in Illinois. After being sentenced to death row, he worked for 37 years while incarcerated in the Illinois Department of Corrections to change the mindset of incarcerated people, as well as staff, regarding what rehabilitation should look like and how to focus attention on true rehabilitation. Ronaldo is responsible for founding the Groundbreaking Building Block Program, a transformational program run by incarcerated people within the Illinois Department of Corrections. Ronaldo's work has been shared by media outlets throughout the state, and he is the subject of the documentary Stateville Calling. Ronaldo now serves as Education Director for the Illinois Prison Project, an organization fighting against the racist and regressive criminal legal system by advocating for and with thousands of people who are needlessly incarcerated. We are also, we are also very proud that Ronaldo Hudson is one of Envisioning Justice's commissioned artists and humanists, and his work will be displayed alongside the other commissioned artists and humanists uh, in a virtual exhibition by Illinois Humanities in early 2022. So without further ado, here are some very insightful words from Ronaldo Hudson. I am so humbled by the fact that my voice will be added to those that continue to call for legislative reform as well as criminal justice reform all across the state. It is extremely important that people begin to understand that mass incarceration is a problem that has taken years and years and years to get to this point. And it is not going to just roll over because people's livelihoods have been built around the idea of enslaving people to employ people. And we have to educate the public that slavery should never be the way in which to employ people. The mass incarceration of so many black and brown men and women is solely because the state couldn't figure out a way to employ people when industry began to leave the state of Illinois. That being said, we have a tremendous opportunity to bring real reform as we begin to share with the public the reality that there are people right now that's willing to fight and get down in the mud and wrestle with all of the systemic racist ideas that continue to rule the day. But the lights are now on and we're moving forward. And so I am so grateful that true reform has begun to rain down on the state of Illinois and we have a chance to end mass incarceration. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Gabby. It is really an honor to um, thank you so much, Ronaldo, for that incredibly inspiring message and for your phenomenal work with the Illinois Prison Project and beyond. We are just so honored to be in community with you as you build your commissioned work for Envisioning Justice and continue all of your work with Chasing Hearts and with the Illinois Prison Project. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, I echo all of Jane's sentiments. Uh, thank you so much, Renato. And yeah, uh, folks, well, leave it or not, uh, we're at our final video for tonight's program. Um, and yeah, I'll, I guess I'll introduce our final contributor and that is Naji Zaid. And, and Naji is an interdisciplinary artist and cultural practitioner based in Chicago, Illinois. Naji is co-director of broadcast advancement at the Public Media Institute and a program facilitator for the Chicago Park District. Naji is also a teaching artist at the Let Us Breathe Collective who has worked on envisioning justice in a variety of capacities. So now relax and enjoy the final video of tonight from Naji Zaid. Advocating for and with thousands of people who are needlessly incarcerated. <laughs> Forgotten. Remember. You've forgotten. Remember.
Thank you so much, Nashi, for that video. Uh, listen to the sounds of liberation is something that's gonna stick with me. Um, and I think that that was a great way for us to come down um, and continue to reflect on all that we've heard in tonight's program. I agree wholeheartedly. And um, Nashi, we've gotten to work with you through Illinois Humanities in a variety of ways. And I've gotten to know you over the years and you just bring such um, heart and, um, and inspiration and joy to all that you do. And so we're very, very grateful um, to have you with us tonight. And speaking of grateful to have you with us tonight, <laughs> thank you for joining Illinois Humanities tonight for Envisioning Justice Rapid Response Reform. We're about to take you to a spectacular set from the phenomenal DJ Alokari, but first, uh, if you want to watch this evening's program again or share it with friends, you can do so right here on YouTube using the same link that got you here tonight. Huge thanks goes out to all of our contributors, to our fabulous funders, the Art for Justice Fund, the Mellon Foundation, and the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation Safety and Justice Challenge. Also, huge thanks to the entire staff of Illinois Humanities, and again to Tony Santiago for making all this technologically possible. Yes, and as a reminder, please join us again tomorrow evening, Thursday, April 15th at 7 p.m. Central Time for a facilitated, critically reflective conversation featuring carceral justice experts from around Illinois. This conversation will continue to reflect on the meaning of reform in relation to justice and provide a space for attendees interested in discussing some of the finer um, details of the latest HB 3653 legislation. Meanwhile, you can stay abreast of all that Illinois Humanities has to offer at ilhumanities.org and at ilhumanities on all the social media channels. But first, uh, stick around right here. Uh, we'll play Shout Across Mountains by Growing Concerns Poetry Collective while we scroll some important credits. And then DJ Elokari is going to hop on this stream and bring us a set that will get you up dancing and off your feet. Thank you again so much for joining Illinois Humanities tonight for Envisioning Justice Rapid Response Reform. Good night, everybody. Good night.
sound like thunderstorms and glaciers falling. We sound like patience in the morning. Wings of light mixed with heaven yawning. Glorious. Scream till we feel victorious. My sound teams with the style of the orderless. Poor profit on soapboxes. Free soul, but the voice had to unlock it. Uh, we disrupt and dismantle. We'll take a knee, motherfuck your anthem. We original, never needed a sample. My silence speaks as loud as these streets on fire. My feet don't tie. Even when I'm chasing the beat in my mind, let it peak in my spine. So I keep it aligned. All I need is the reason, the word, and the rhyme. Boom. Lost myself in the tune. Lost myself to your view. Lost myself to the coon. Lost what I felt too soon. Lost with all of these black bantu. African connections run through no matter if it's only y'all in the room. All greet a homie like, ooh, I'm trying to get like you. We loud and we proud cause we full voice people. If it's only y'all in the room, all greet a homie like, ooh, I'm trying to get like you. We loud and we proud cause we full voice people. If it's only y'all in the room, all greet a homie like, ooh, I'm trying to get like you, we loud and we proud. All right, all right, all right, looks like we are finally live. Hello, everybody. We about to get our dance on and our hangout on. It's been such a pleasure. Uh, my name is DJ L O Kari, man. My name is D -D 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 DJ L O Kari in the mix. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy DJ L O Kari, man, and it is such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, time to be able to join you all. And I am so excited to play for you guys today. Thank y'all so much for being at the Reform event. Uh, you guys are amazing. So if you decide to be here, I just want to give you some hand claps. You know what I mean? Uh, and that tells me that you love yourself just a little bit more if you're sticking around. So, you know, I'm here to make sure that you guys have a good time tonight, that you dance, that you enjoy yourself, that you find a way to get free and truly, truly, truly enjoy yourself, man. Um, we are entering a new paradox, uh, a new sense of reawakening. And I want to make sure that, you know, this day you guys um, really enjoy yourself and really give back to love so um, also just so you know I did uh, I am dropping an album so I don't know man you know throughout this set you might hear some original music from uh, from your as well you know so uh, be on the lookout for some of that stuff too so uh, I can't wait so you know what actually to go ahead and get this uh, this set started I'm going to play one of my joints for y'all to get y'all, you know, you grooving for the day and everything. First off, shout outs to Jane, shout outs to Tony, you know what I mean, who's the man. Everybody don't know, like, how much work goes into being behind the scenes. So can I just give some flowers to Tony? Because he's always killing it. Uh, and also, I just want to give some flowers to Jane. You know, you guys, like, uh, today my theme has been really giving back to women who are, you know, doing the doggone thing. And Jane, you are most definitely one of those women that I believe are doing the doggone thing. So uh, to get y'all grooving for the day, this is a single that has not dropped yet. This is exclusive for y'all. Uh, it is called Let's Groove. It is uh, featuring me, Khalid B, and Shai Tulani. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get this, this groove started and everything. Uh, also, like, the reason I'm playing some of my own tracks is because, hey, as I'm growing in confidence, one thing that I think is very more important and also, oh, thank you. Thank you, Chris, for the happy belated. I appreciate you. Um, yo, man, uh, I need to get out of my own way. You know what I mean? So as a person that's getting out of his own way, uh, I want you all and encourage you all to do that too. So yeah, man, to start this off, I'm going to hit you off with an exclusive track that's going to hopefully make you dance. And it's called Let's Groove. It's an Afrobeat vibe. Let's go. Let's groove tonight. Everybody's feeling fine. Let your body loose tonight. Cast your mind free and feel the vibe. Bing the tum tum. Feel the bass tum. Let the rhythm fill you up. On the dance floor, we can take it low. Let the energy build you back. Oh, I'm just here for a good time. Work on 
okay for my nine to five. So if you're talking bullshit, then press the wise. Let it come in just for you. I've been 
boom. <laughs> Whatever you are right now, you need to be dancing. I don't know if you are sitting down right now, but if you are out, you need to be dancing right now. From the day my bond to ignite my flame Girl, I call my name and it is my fame It's a good girl, turn me on Till I earn them on, let's get it on Let's get it on, till I earn them on Girl, it's a good, just turn me on Girl, close with it, don't get agitated Girl, go out, rotate, go anything you want You know you must get it Come in here, my mention, yo, is the tension Girl, run the program, just go up with it Yo, have a good time, girl, free up on your mind Cause nobody can't get your man, go let it Cause you are the number one, girl, we have your hand See the wedding band, yo Sexy ladies want part with us You know the car with us Them not war with us You know the club Them want flex with us To get next to us Them not vex with us From the day my band I ignite my flame Can I call my name And it is my fame It's a good girl Turn me on Till I earn them on Let's get it on Let's get it on Till I earn them on Girl, it's a good Just turn me on Come on, get busy Cause shit that food And I'll stop When the beat drop Just get swinging it Get jigging Get drunk up Y'all better be dancing wherever you are.
Mike and Marlon. Only thing on my mind now is stardom. Blowing the F up, my game stepped up. Remember when Mike and them first came through Mecca? Singing hits like Skywriter, my girl. People make the world go round, mama's firm. Can't lose it, joyful jukebox music. Never can say goodbye, that's why we use it. It's money, honey, so I got to be there. And I'ma be your sugar daddy, fans, friend. Versace, chef, PD, life of the party. Bad boy, I make choice for everybody.
Hit you guys with another original real soon The name of the new song is called Lazarus It'll be coming up right after this track Another original You can go download that song right now In a minute it's called Lazarus know where you are but you better be dancing wherever you are you better be getting that dance on right now let's go
fam family's way Then we may as well be slain But everyone else has a worse day What's the justice when you're alone? They wanna see us bound and enforce their way of thinking All while seeking is a clear agenda Keep you in a state of flux No reparations for the victim whom believes that you are going to do What's just for few, I said But you know what's really going on We can only strive for what is right And I like to believe that greed is in the catalyst for And it's true people, how is it illegal? You call it justice, I call it evil You want me to ride in a box Hoping they forget my name, but I am not lame Can't tell you to strive for the change We have to do all the things Wherever you are, I hope you are dancing right now. You're listening to a brand new track by DJ Elo Kari. It's called Lazarus featuring your boy Lester Ray. Let's go. Feelings lead to the tower falling, screaming. Pensions can be disrupted, so they protect corrupt interest. Student loans must be repaid, so blue man come disrupt your day. They can't stand to see my face, they can't stand to see me stand, they can't stand to see me ace any of the exams. Oh, much less smile and join the team, now. much less winning Grammys on the sets, much less watch a black man become president, much less. Una mierda, digo lo que yo digo como yo digo No te metas conmigo, mijo Con esa sabiduría de niño Tú no tienes que abrazar a mami, che eh, No asustas a nadie eh, Somos la gente fuerte eh, Cántala conmigo, man Don't you worry about me. Don't you worry about me. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm your boy DJ L.O. Kari. Thank you guys so much for having a good time. I hope you've been dancing and have a really, really good time. But we're getting close to the end of the day. And so we're going to play like one or two more songs to wrap it up. But we most definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening in, man. Peace and blessings. Yeah, yeah. so so very much for rocking with me i'm your boy dj lo kari and it has been such a wonderful wonderful evening i hope that you all have enjoyed yourself i hope you got a little bit of dancing in because when you dance you get free all right and that's all that this music is supposed to really do if it's not being used as medicine to get you free then it's not really that fun for me so thank you guys so much for hanging out having a good time and all that kind of stuff if you want to keep in touch with your boy, you can always find me on social media just under DJ L O Kari. Tips are always accepted. You know what I mean? So if you feel inclined and you want to like you enjoyed your experience, you can always tip. That's always great. You know, we are working artists out here. Uh, and thank you so much, man. Shout outs to Envisioning Justice. Love you guys so, so very much. Peace, love, and blessings. This track that I'm in it with is called Give Me Your Love. So thank you all for your love. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening. Peace and blessings to you. Also, go tell a woman that you love today. Go tell some woman that you appreciate them today. You know what I mean? All of them, you know what I'm saying? So make sure that you, if you haven't told somebody who you appreciate that you appreciate them today, make sure that you go do that. That's my one challenge to you. Go give somebody some love today. Peace to you. Thank you all.
Tete, 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 tete,